anybody. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! Any of you fucking pricks move! And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you! What up, boys? It's your friend Magnus back here again with another custom 1.6 review. And this is a big one because it's uh, based off my all-time favorite movie, Pulp Fiction, number one. This is the movie that uh, made me look at movies in a different light. I mean, I've been a fan of movies since a child, of course, but uh, this is the movie that after watching it dialogue-wise and everything just made me have a different appreciation for films and uh, I thank Quentin Tarantino for that because uh turned me to the person I am today as far as uh, my passion and love for movies and cult films and uh, this movie right here, what can you not say that's uh, you know awesome about it? And of course, these are by my pal, uh, Master Lee, Rain Man. Uh, right here you can see Vincent and Jules in all their glory. And uh, there's a lot to talk about in this review, fellas. Um, this is the first time I'm doing a review inside my detox because I just think this setup right here is really the ultimate. I mean, the more I look at it every day, it's just like so complete. And I wanted you guys to feel it from inside my cabinet, inside the collection. It's got a nice lighting, which is something that I'm still trying to work on in my reviews. Um, you know, with the last review I did, I felt kind of bad because the light was so orange and it was drowning out the figure the flesh tones and everything so this is what I'm going to try to do from now on if I can uh, we do some reviews inside the detail and I'm um, try to do my best on this one and I hope you can bear with me alright so first up you see right here we got Vincent Vega John Travolta in all his glory as you see right here look at that awesome head sculpt by Rain Man I'll zoom in on that oh my god look at that man the likeness is uncanny um, you know me, I'll start from the bottom up so we could get into this. As you can see here first, let me get this out the way. This is the Jackrabbit Slim's uh, menu. And this was given to everybody as a gift from uh, Neo Geo. And it's done by a member on the Sideshow Freaks named Pitbull. And it's a 1-6 scale menu. It's got everything it needs in there. The whole menu. Uh, it's just missing Buddy Holly to serve it. Shout out to Steve Buscemi. And um, this was a gift if you picked up... The next thing I can show you, which is uh, Robbie's briefcase. Uh, you know, Robbie the painter on Sideshow Freaks Forum. He's always there to help us out and complete our sets with the uh, crucial accessories that are uh, missing or uh, the, the release is lacking. So a big up to uh, Robbie. And let me get into the briefcase a little later. Oh man, there's so much things, like I said, I'm rambling. It's all over the place. Um, so let's get the Jackrabbit Slims out the way. And we're gonna start with Vincent Vega because he was the first release. And as you can see right here, Vincent's got the nicely sculpted shoes, very shiny. Uh, as you can see, let me see if I can pull that up perfectly with the buckle. Um, just really nicely done. Beautiful, beautiful work. All right, let me fix that pant leg. Um, Vincent is on a very nice, customly tailored outfit. It's a black suit. I, yeah, a lot of people complained, oh, I don't want to pay a lot of money for guys in a black suit, but I mean, Guys, this is Pulp Fiction, man. It's two guys in a black suit. And uh, as you can see in the background, we do have the dork clothing. So you do have options. And uh, you can even bloody these guys up and if you want it. And uh, plenty of ways to do this. Beautifully done, as you can see here. Uh, Vince has a nice heft to him. He looks just like John Travolta in the movie, kind of chubby. Uh, Rain Man has like a nice foam suit under there that just makes the character pop out a little bit. Um... So you can see here, like I just want to move this around. Oh man, what a beautiful piece. And as you can see here, Vince is holding his uh, book, which is the Modesty Blaze. And um, this book actually has all the pages inside. Um, I guess I could take it out for the review so you could get a uh, uh, good shot at it. 
This was the special item if you uh, picked up Vince. Very nice. And um, let me open this up so you can see. Sorry guys. So it does have all the pages inside, accurate as hell. And for anybody that wants to know like how could they make their book like better, because when Rayman gave you this, it was the, uh, looks like, a, it was very, it didn't have like a hard spine. So what I did was I took a matchbook and I just cut it out to size, like the little flaps. And I, uh, you know, glued them in there. And then I used a little sticky tag down the spine and uh, I was able to stick the pages in there. And now it's together like a real book. It looks like a little bit rubbed off because I had it in uh, Vince's hand there, so that kind of sucks, but it's all right. Um, all right, we're getting blurry. Let me just pull back. Yeah, like I said, this is a freaking crazy release. I'm all over the place. As you can see here, Rayman sculpted Vince's uh, 45, or right here, it's got the little, uh, it's got the ivory handle with the uh, logo on it. You know, his thumb is covering up right there, but it's all there, all the detail. Beautifully done, as you can see here. Really, really nice work. Um, on to the head sculpt. Uh, the head sculpt was crazy because when this uh, figure was first shown, um, Vincent was going to be the Jack Rabbit Slim's dancing version with the ponytail. But um, the plan with, all the time was to have Vincent Jules, and that wouldn't have worked. So, uh, you know, everybody voiced their opinion, and we got the uh, gangster Vincent done. So Rain Man uh, scrapped the ponytail and went with real hair. And as you could also see, let me zoom in right there, he does have his real gold earring. Definitely like a nice touch right there. And you can see the hair. Uh, let me see if I could just turn the figure around inside the cabinet so you can get a better idea. There's real sculpted chunks of hair back here, guys. Very delicate, uh, beautifully done. As you can see, there's a seam there. But uh, Rayman really covered it up well, and um, that's where the ponytail was taken out and the real gangster haircut was uh, left back in. So you have all the strands of hair there, they're all there. Very delicate, so be careful when you're posing this, and uh, you don't want to rub it across the shoulder and crack a piece of the hair. So as you can see, I'm trying to be gentle with this piece right here. All right, um, the next thing that was part of the Vincent set, of course, is the Dork clothes, Jimmy's Dork clothes. And of course, on Vince, it was the UC Santa Cruz Banana Slug shirt and the blue shorts, expertly done by Rayman's Taylor. Uh, and a lot of people were given a lot of flack on these releases because of the uh, lack of accessories, but I think these outfits are very crucial. And as you can see now on the forums, people are starting to appreciate it and are glad that they came out. So. Uh, Fuck all the haters. This is Pulp Fiction, complete as, it gonna, as it's gonna get in one sixth, and I think it's a very beautiful set. So there you have the uh, Vincent set. As you can see, I also uh, switched out the hands to some Enter Bay hands. It gives you a nice book holding hand, nice gun hand. Perfect, Vincent is done. Now I'm moving on to my boy Sam Jack. Jules, uh, Jules Winfield. <laughs> I will start him also from the bottom up. And then we'll get to Robbie's uh, masterpiece. So as you see here, Jules was a lot more of a harder release. Uh, Rayman had a hard time acquiring African American body on the market because they're not out there. Uh, back in the day, Hot Toys had the Obama body, and that would have been the one that probably would have worked for Jules with a little modification. But uh, they're hard to come by right now. So Rayman used the Enter Bay body, and I think it's the Will Smith Men in Black. And um, I think it works. Jules is a tall, lanky person, and this is a very uh, tall figure. The body is nice and tight, and it's definitely tailored, perfectly slim. I think it just really works. Some people aren't happy with it. They're switching it out. That's fine for them. But for me, it works. Uh, another big issue with this figure was that Rayman had that he couldn't sculpt shoes because the Enter Bay pegs are just very long. They're not ball jointed like how uh, Hot Toys pegs are, so it, it proved to be a problem. So Rayman had to use real feet and uh, switched it out with some uh, PVC shoes because that was all that was available to him in bulk. So um, that was a little sad, but uh, you could actually switch them out, get your own little shoes that you like. And what I went with right here are the uh, DID Daniel Craig Bond shoes. They have the laces. They match uh, Vince's shoes perfectly. And uh, they do a hell of a wonder in switching the uh, look of the figure with the cheap plastic shoes. So switch that out, fellas. Get yourself some nice, shiny ACI shoes or DID shoes. 
and your jewels is ready to go. As you can see now, I'm moving up the suit. Uh, I need to hit these pants with a little steam. They're a little wrinkly from coming out the box and I never addressed that. So my apologies if it looks a little messy. But uh, the fit on this suit to this body is perfect. Just really beautiful. As you can see here, Rain Man threw in the big kahuna cup. This was a last minute addition uh, because uh, people felt like the release was lacking. And I'm glad that uh, the voices were heard and this was added because it definitely adds to this figure. And I love this pose. I mean, it might not be an accurate, accurate movie pose, but uh, it works for me and it makes Julie stand out. And as you can see here, um, I left this pose also like that so you can see that uh, Jules gold bracelet is there. It's all it's right there, fully uh, replicated in one six scale. And then on to uh, Jules' uh, 9mm, Mr. 9mm. Just like Vince's, but I think they called Vince's a 45. I'm not sure. I have to do the research on that. His doesn't have a little logo on the side. It's just a plain solid white ivory uh, handle. And as far as I know in the history of these, both of these guns are actually owned by Quentin Tarantino. They were his personally owned guns. And as you can see here, Jules pinky ring, giant crusted gold pinky ring. Um, trying to zoom in. Let me see if I can put my hand there, and then you could uh, just get a look at that. There you go. Look at look at that nugget, man. That's serious business right there. And if you're wondering how I got it on this hand, because this hand is a a closed fist that uh, just has a, a trigger finger. I took a razor and I just sliced right down the middle and separated the finger, so I was able to put Jules pinky ring in there because. How could I not have that with him holding this gun? Jules has to be in his uh, glory, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, as you can see here, we also have the nice, tightly uh, placed collar. I, I don't know what they would call that, but uh, as you can see, their collars are completely different. And uh, Rain Man's tailor nailed it. It's perfectly in there. If you go watch the film, this is exactly how Jules' collar is. Beautiful, beautiful work with a nice tight tie. As you can see, the way the jacket is hugging on his chest is nice and tight. It just, it's just beautiful. And then we're going to go on to the controversial head sculpt. Another, another mystery right here. Some people aren't uh, happy with it. I think it's excellent. As you can see here, it's talking to me. It's, it's Julie. It's Sam Jackson. English motherfucker, you speak it. And uh, let me uh, move this over so I can uh, turn him around and go... Oops, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. Um, I'll get to that in a second. All right, so uh, let me turn him around so you get to appreciate it. Awesome, awesome work. As you can see here, the afro is actually like an add-on piece that you just, is popped on top, so it gives it that real heft and uh, dimension that's like a big, big fro. All right, let me see, um, going all the way around. back over this way. I don't want to keep going. I don't want nothing to tip over. I've already kind of uh, dropped something, so sucks. But this is a natural one take honest review, guys. I know you can appreciate it from your boy. I try to only bring the raw, give you a nice outlook on everything. All right, as you can see here now in the background, we have Jules Dork clothes. Another thing that uh, was a last minute addition, and I'm glad because if we had Vince's, how could we not have Jules? Look at those shorts, man. The material is like that real uh, watery, like rubberish kind of material. It's just a sick, sick set. And um, also the full set secret item was the Bad Motherfucker Wallet, which I have taped to the back of the glass. And also Jules J chain, which uh, I'm sorry in the mirror if you can't see it all, but it's there. Uh, the Bad Motherfucker print is readable when uh, you know looking up close, but right now the camera's not really catching it well. And um, hey, there's me. What's up, fellas? Uh, yeah, so Jules chain is there. I don't have him wearing it right now because it's more, the only way you would really see it is in the door clothes. When he's wearing the suit, you cannot see it at all. So I'd rather just have it represented right there. So you have a couple of dorks if you want, man. And Robbie actually told anybody that got in on this set, send him the feet and he tried to make you some sandals to go with that. And uh, you can't beat that. So now on to the gem of this uh, set which was a, a late edition add-on, which is the, uh, the suitcase, <laughs> the suitcase. Uh, the boss's dirty laundry, whatever you want to call it, Marcellus's soul. That's a, 
little thing over there that people, a theory that people have had for years because uh, Ving Rhames um, had a band-aid on the back of his neck, but they said it was because of razor bumps, but people say that this, the devil would take his soul from the back of your neck. And uh, if you look at the combination on the briefcase, let me see if I can catch that with this uh, details here. But the briefcase combination, oh, that's gonna be real hard, was 666. Let me see if this shows right here. And Robbie's caught that. I mean, this is insane, this briefcase right here. Yeah, it's, it's a very fine detail that you would have to look up close. The camera is not catching it. Uh, yeah, so I like that theory that it's Marcellus' soul and the guys are going out there to get it back. And um, really, really cool little theory. All right, now on to the actual briefcase. This was the last thing that Rayman couldn't do uh, with the time frame he has and everything that's going on. It was a uh, missed accessory by many, but like I said, Robbie's always there to pick up the slack and get us what we need to complete our sets. And uh, thank God we have this guy in the community with us. I love you, Robbie. Thank you so much. And uh, you can see here, I have number six of 55. Robbie does open-end editions with a timeline. If you can make it in there in that time, you're in. If not, then... Uh, that's it, he's not making any more. So uh, keep an eye out for Robbie when you're a 1-6 perfectionist and you want all the best uh, accessories to go with your items. I have a couple of his other things that I will show you soon enough in other reviews. But let's get to this Pope briefcase. As you can see here, it has a real leather type appearance. The handle even has a little uh, leatherness to it. Damn, it's really hard to see. We have the latches, of course. I'll pick this up now. All the little studs around it. And of course, this is a working lighted briefcase. And uh, let me put the camera down for a second. And you can stare at Uma's cleavage. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Let me just open this back up because it took a little dip when I was reviewing. All right. So now you can see the briefcase does open up and it gives you that light. The light that whenever Vincent or uh, Honey Bunny open the briefcase and uh, they seen the glow. And that's another great reason why that theory of the soul works. It's just so cool. Another theory they said it was the, the jewels from uh, Reservoir Dogs, but I don't think jewels would be giving off a goldish glow like that. So Robbie went all the way out with this. He offered this in a closed briefcase or a lighted one. And how could you not go for the lighted one? I mean. It's just insane. So you have a little switch right here that you would just click on and turn on this nice light and you'll have that gold background right there to get that reflection. And it's movie accurate. I mean, I don't know how this guy does it. It's just amazing. And of course, like you see here, there's a little magnet. So when you close this briefcase, it's locked in. You just push down on the little tabs and your briefcase is closed and ready to hold if you uh, want to put it in the hand of Julie or Vincent. And uh, that's it, guys. I mean... This is my favorite movie. I mean, my dad took me to see this movie in 1994 on my birthday in Times Square. I'll never forget it. Uh, I can tell you guys, as I watched this movie, we went to see it just because we were fans of John Travolta. And uh, we just knew that he had, it was supposedly his comeback. And uh, I didn't know nothing about the movie, nothing at all. And we went in there and we were totally blown away, especially the bring out the gimp scene and not knowing what was going on behind the door, only what you uh, could imagine. I was on the edge of my seat. I kicked over my soda in the theater. My dad was laughing. It was just insane and um, blown away. I'll just tell you that like the next day I was in Chinatown on the hunt for the bootleg VHS tape, which I bought for a cheap five bucks. And I studied this movie like a madman. I showed it to all my friends and I was just like, you guys aren't ready for this. I haven't even seen Reservoir Dogs at the time. I didn't know who Tarantino was, but um, I have a, a fiction, affectionate love for this director from now on. His scripts, his dialogue, uh, his films, they're just the best. And like I said, this is my number one movie of all time. Some people say they don't understand. It's not for you to understand. It's for me and my passion and my love. And thank you to Rain Man for uh, knocking out this beautiful set. It's complete, it's Pulp Fiction, it's one six, it's a grail. It's the grail of uh, movie stuff. And if you guys didn't notice, you can look at my old collection video. I had that one detolf that I had movie cases in, the magic detolf I call it, because since those movie cases have been in that detolf, I'd say about 75% of those figures have now been done or are being made. So uh, it's just a real crazy omen. 
But uh, I'm talking too much. This is one of a long video. Take time to soak in Vincent Vega, Jules Winfield, our man from Amsterdam and our man from Inglewood. Uh, these are my boys, man. Soak this in by the master Rain Man. And I'm leaving out a little thing here. I'm sorry, there I go again. Robbie also included a big Kahuna burger bag, one six scale. And that was in addition to uh, buying the briefcase. And of course, the briefcase and the bag came in a big size, big Kahuna burger thing. Such class, man. Thank you so much, Robbie. I will shut my mouth again and let you soak it in. Pole Fiction, 1-6 Perfection, by the Masters of the 1-6 game. Robbie the Painter and Master Lee Rain Man.